Hello everyone, it's Mino Hexer. In this video, we're going to go over a game of Zara support. I think Zara has a lot of very interesting strengths compared to other supports. She's one of the few mages that can be played as a support, and she can get away with it because of her excellent scaling with her plant damage, as well as being able to easily get vision compared to other supports using her plants. She also has a lot of excellent CC and zoning in team fights. So most of her damage doesn't need to be burst damage like some mages. She can just stay in the back and control team fights with her plants and her ult, and can provide some very consistent poke in the lane. In this bot lane matchup, it's a Jin Zara versus Caitlyn Morgana. Once again, it's always important before the lane starts to kind of think about how the matchup is going to work in your head. Caitlyn Morgana is a very scary duo lane because if Morgana lands a binding, the Caitlyn can place a trap and pretty much instantly get blown up with Caitlyn's full damage with your trap headshot, Q, and another headshot. Jin Zyra, on the other hand, is very focused on poke. With my plant poking the Caitlyn and Morgana from a distance, the Jin is going to be able to land a free W root, and that's how we're going to get most of the damage in the lane and win the lane. So because of the dynamic of this lane, I want to make sure that I poke very safely and conservatively with my Q, and to make sure I don't get hit by a binding because the instant I get hit by a binding I'm going to die because I'm a very squishy mage. At level 1 it's really good to get to lane first if you know your jungler doesn't need a leash. This is really important because if you get to lane first you can start using your passive to apply seeds to get scattered around in the middle of the lane. So this will help you give a lot of pressure because you can always threaten to blossom the plants with your Q and to start having the plants auto attack anyone that gets in range. And this should give you enough pressure to get level 2 first. As soon as I do hit level 2 I'm going to immediately level up W and make a plant seed to proc my Comet. I like taking Comet over Airy because I think that, especially in this matchup against Morgana, I'm going to be poking on very long intervals. I'm pretty much only going to be poking whenever I have plants up with my W, so I only really want my Comet to proc on those instances and the overall damage would be a lot better if I use Comet rather than Airy, which requires me to always be auto attacking or using spells on them every couple seconds. But as you can see, I'm always keeping my distance away from Morgana, never being in range of her Q, and I'm only looking to poke with my QW combo at together, and then letting Jin follow up with his own W for extra damage. I see Ivern is coming in for a gank. So I'm going to use my root and I land a root on Caitlyn. Unfortunately, the Iron misses his Q and the Caitlyn flashes. However, getting the Caitlyn flash out of the way is very good. I also know that we're going to use Ignite. So once again, you should always make sure to time the summoner spells bot so you know who to go on later on in the lane if there's an opportunity that, pre that presents itself. With that Ivern gank and knowing that Caitlyn flashes down as well as Morgana's Ignite, we have way more pressure to continuously push them under turret and to start pressing our lead. I'm going to try to help the Jin continuously shove the lane by auto attacking the creeps every now and then, as well as being much more liberal with using my plants to push the lane with Q. As Jin is autoing, I'm always walking slightly forward to threaten the Caitlyn from ever going in for CS, because if she ever walks in to range to go in for an auto for a CS, I can always use my E to land a root, or I can always use my Q. You can see right there, leaving plants under the turret will make the plant die in one turret shot, so do be a little careful when you're using your plants like that. However, with that harass, Caitlyn is forced to go back, and now we have free reign to take a plating of gold from the turret, which is very nice for us. However, we can't do that quite this way, so we're going to wait one more week to do so, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, collect the plating before we head back. With the ward we place uh, across the wall, we do spot the Sejuani, so we choose not to go forward anymore and we just used a recall. With our back, we've amounted a pretty reasonable lead, about 10 CS, which allows Jin to buy boots over Caitlyn and allow me to get a Frostfang and some pinks and a refillable, which is very much needed for any support. Right now, I do see the Morganas in the bush with the trinket ward I placed before I recalled. However, I'm being really patient with throwing my E so that I can land it at the very edge of it, which allows me to land it before she can user black shield, which gives us a little bit of your ass. It's always good to be a little patient with your spells, especially if you see people in vision, because you don't want to give away your positioning immediately. Sometimes it's okay to be a little more conservative. 
We do see that Ivern's trying to contest the blue, so we immediately move up to try to help out the Ivern. I use my plans over here to zone the Caitlyn and Morgana from coming in. Meanwhile, I'm going to walk up and flash ignite the Sejuani to make sure she can't get away and secure us the kill and buff. Once again, I'm going to use more plants to continuously zone out the bot lane from walking in. And then we're going to use a blast gun to get out. What's really important to note in this invade when we're helping Ivern is that before we help the Ivern, we have to shove the lane first. By shoving the lane first and then proceeding to walk up, it forces Caitlyn to arrive late because she has to clear the extra minions before she can get up. So even though the fight is on the enemy side, we are able to get there at the same time as the enemy bot lane. I'm also making sure to focus my plans on the bot lane because I know if I can zone the bot lane out from coming into the fight, we can easily kill the Sejuani in a 3v1. If we remember from the exchange we had before from the Ivern gank, I still know that Caitlyn flashes down and we're going to be hitting 6 soon. Therefore, I would like to press our advantage while we have a summoner spell advantage and try to get a kill on the enemy bot lane to help our team out. Since Caitlyn is a little bit low, we are just going to keep pushing our advantage and continuing to move forward. Even though I got binded there, I immediately throw my root out in retaliation to make sure that the Caitlyn can't walk up safely and force her to get chunked for trying to harass me. And even though I'm really low, I'm choosing to stay because I really would like to keep pressuring the bot lane and forcing Caitlyn to recall immediately. If she does recall, then we are able to take more plate and gold. And I'm not in threatened by any of her spells, except for perhaps a Caitlyn ult. However, with that previous wave, she does hit level 6, but luckily the uh, Jin is able to heal me, and now Jin's going to retaliate back with his ult now that he has mana, and he gets a really nice snipe on the Caitlyn, which allows us to continue to push. I'm choosing to stay because I want to proc my Frostfang on the turret and completing my gold generation quest. However, the Morgana lands a really nice flashing knight on me, and she does end up killing me. However, because she used all her summoner spells, the Jin knows that he's he's in a pretty easy spot to kill the Morgana because he also has flash, but however he doesn't need to use it, he's going to use a very simple auto-Q auto. So even though I might have died, I still think it's fine to burn the Morgana summoner spells and trade one for one. Jin's going to keep on snowballing and I can continue to press our advantage since Jin is now two kills up and I know we are definitely stronger than the enemy bot lane. As long as none of us gets binded first by the Morgana, I know we're going to definitely be able to win the DP2. Since I got to lane first, I'm going to choose to try to freeze the wave near the turret. Making a plant here is completely fine because it allows the wave to be frozen in a reasonable spot without having me to sit in front of the wave to tank the damage. I'm going to try to last hit as necessary and then walk up a little bit to make sure that the enemy bot lane isn't trying to soak up experience in the bush. Unlike other supports, I think that with a mage support, it's not as good to roam if you don't need to, so I'd rather just stay in the bot lane and soak up experience and to establish presence and set up for the Jin to come back instead of trying to roam around the map. I also don't think it's worth it right now because I don't have my quest completed, and so I can't really get that much vision around the map at this current moment in time, so it'd be a little bit of waste of time to run mid at this current moment. However, if I did have my quest, I would definitely have gone to drop some wards around. Since Elena's push, I decided to ward right over here. This ward is really nice to have over the wall because it spots out many junglers who can dash over the wall. For example, Sejuani can sometimes use the blast cone to get over the wall, or she can just queue over the wall just to get across for a gank. So this ward is really nice to cover that spot. It doesn't cover this tri bush, but we can't really ward this tri bush unless we push very deeply in. And if the Sejuani happens to be in the tri-bush, when we do try to go for a ward, it'd be really bad for us. So I'd rather play a little bit more conservatively and use the, my trinket ward here. I can always use plants to put a ward inside the bush for a couple seconds if I need to anyways. I do see Morgana's walking mid, so Jin and I are already posturing up to continue pushing and to threaten the Caitlyn under turret. Since we know that Morgana's not here, Jin and I are both going to walk up. And we do force a Caitlyn Flash because Jin does have red buff and can threaten the root with his auto and W. I'm going to help Jin push the wave and we're just going to continue applying more and more pressure and forcing the Caitlyn Morgana to sit under turret. Even under turret, you can definitely make plants and then back off to avoid the turret from aggroing onto you. 
One tip you can do for making plants under turret is that you can place the plants immediately behind where the turret is facing. This makes it extremely difficult for the Caitlyn or Morgana to be able to auto the plant because the mouse has a hard time focusing on the plant because it'll usually auto target the turret instead. Therefore your plants are going to be able to get a lot of extra auto attacks off without the Caitlyn or Morgana being able to retaliate. In this case, since I'm very much out of range and the turret is aggroing onto the cannon, my plants get off quite a few autos on the Caitlyn without her noticing and she's going to take so much damage from that free poke. With that very strong poke on the Caitlyn, Jin and I are pretty much free to continue pushing and we're going to definitely be able to take the turret this next wave if they don't have any help. We see the Morgana left to try to help out the jungler and so we're going to get another plating and we're going to nearly be able to take the turret after this next wave. I could go for a flash ult here on this Caitlyn instead of just going for the root. However, I don't think it's worth using both my flash and my ult or ignite to kill the Caitlyn in that instance because she's already low enough to the point where we can take this turret safely. So I'd rather just take the turret safely and save my summoner spells instead of trying to go for a kill that won't amount to that much. Caitlyn already died a couple times already, so her bounty gold isn't worth that much and I'd rather just save my summoner spells for another future time. Once again, it's okay to be a little bit more conservative. Now that we took the bot lane turret, we have the option of either recalling or taking dragon. Zyra's particularly good at taking dragon because her plants can do a ton of extra damage to dragon without much effort. However, the enemy team decides to fight us under the dragon. I'm going to position myself pretty far in the back and just try to help peel and try to zone out people with my plants and provide CC for my team. However, we lose the dragon and we have to start backing off. When you have to assess the situation of what to do as a support who has pretty long cooldowns and spells and can only really provide zoning and CC, it's important to identify which target you want to CC the most and just expend your CC to make sure that the important carries on your team get protected. In this case, I see that Ivern is trying to contest the dragon with Juani. The Katarina is up next to Anivia and Jin, and the Silas is walking towards the dragon, most likely towards Ivern. Therefore, I have a couple choices I have to make. I can either help the Ivern or help the Jin and Anivia. I think Katarina is a much scarier target because if we don't kill the Katarina immediately, she's going to do way too much damage to our team, and she can nearly one-shot either me or Jin if we mess up our CC. So I'd rather just expend everything I have on the Katarina rather than the Sejuani, because I'd rather secure the kill for a backline, and since we're definitely a team that relies more on playing with the backline, we need to prioritize protecting our carries rather than contesting the dragon in this current situation. I also think it's very unlikely that we'll win the fight if I help out the Ivern, given that Ivern doesn't do a whole lot of damage and is currently a 1v2 on the bottom side of the river where the Ivern is. Therefore, we zone out the Katarina, Jin gets a kill on the Katarina, and the Ivern's gonna fall to both the Silas and the Sejuani. I'm starting to back out and I'm gonna just throw out a root to help out the Anivia escape and we're just gonna back out immediately and just cut our losses. We traded one for one and we lost Dragon, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. Before we, I recall, I'm gonna drop one ward in the river here and then get out. I like putting a ward in the river in this specific bush because this bush right here is really important to spot out when lanes are gonna rotate around the map. Especially since Dragon is already dead, the next objective that is going to be contested is going to be Rift Herald. And so it's pretty important to word this bush because if their mid laner like Katarina shoves the wave in the middle, she's most likely going to walk towards the path toward the Rift Herald if the team is going to contest it. So having vision here is really nice. In my recall, I'm going to start working towards uh, Leandri's Torment as my first item. I think it's a really good first item because our team has an insane amount of CC, so having the Leandri's Torment passive is going to increase my damage by a very significant amount. I'm going to choose to walk to mid, however I'm slightly hovering bot side. I'm mainly doing this because I really want to try to harass Katarina and establish a vision around mid side while also being somewhat in the area for Jin because Jin wants to shove up bot. If Jin does get ganked, it isn't too hard for me to run down to bot lane and help the Jin out. 
and I can clear a lot of the vision and establish presence in the mid lane for Anivia as well. I see the Morgana's top tide, so I'm going to start making my way towards the area. However, it does look like that top turret is going to fall, so instead I'm going to ping mid so that we can instead push mid turret, rather than try to contest top. If you know what lane is going to start falling and you can't reach the lane in time to defend it, it's better to push another open lane. In this case, since no one is mid because we know the entire enemy team is top, we're going to take that mid turret for free. As we're taking the mid turret, I place one ward over the wall to the right to spot any incoming flanks from Katarina or the Caitlyn rotating over. Meanwhile, on the left here, we do see the Silas and the Morgana coming to flank us. Once again, instead of choosing to push forward and try to get the Katarina or the Caitlyn, it's once again better to peel for a back line because we have to play very much back to front with our team comp. I'm going to choose to stick around with my Jin and Anivia and make sure that I try to zone out as many people as I can. I throw out the root to stop the stolen Jin ult and then I'm going to continuously space myself away from Anivia just in case she gets CC'd and then throw my ult as well as more roots to try to help out my team. With this pink cord, I do see the Silas, so I'm gonna land a free easy root and we're gonna just CC on top of him and get a free kill. Once again, I'm very much playing bodyguard in this game, so I want to save my spells and position myself so that I'm always staying within the back line and I'm not being in the front line unless I'm very confident we're gonna go for an engage, which in general I don't think should happen. So I'd rather just stay in the back and just continuously use my zoning and my CC to zone out the enemy team from coming closer to us. Even though I should be working towards Leandri's tournament, you should never stop to buy pink wards because they're always important to buy at every phase of the game. For example, placing a pink ward in bushes you know will most likely have another pink ward is really good because if you place a normal ward, the vision's gonna get immediately denied because of the enemy pink. So having a pink ward in the same bush as another pink ward is really good if you need to contest a very specific area. For example, this bush right here is a very contested spot, so having the pink here is really nice. Alternatively, I could use my plants to get vision in the bush without it being denied. However, I would like to save my plants in this scenario because I do see Caitlyn is middle and I am anticipating that we might fight soon, so I'd rather have my plants for the team fight. Jin does a very nice job of forcing Caitlyn summoners, so I'm going to be sure to time the summoners for the future because it's going to be very helpful in finding a pick later. Since Jin wants to push mid, I'm going to just trail right behind the Jin to make sure he doesn't get jumped on. Once again, I'm really making sure to space myself as far away as possible from Jin in case he gets a Juani ulted or CC'd by Morgana. That way, I can help provide some peel if he gets caught. I'm also making sure to plant random seeds in the middle of the lane as the Jin is sieging. For example, right there, I could pop my Q and get all those plants up and going, which will help provide a lot of zoning in case any of them try to jump us. One small tip of Zyra is that if you have two seeds saved up in your W, you should always be planting one seed on the ground somewhere so that way you can start recharging your second seed so you're always going to have maximum seeds on the ground all the time. I do see the Silas is jumping me here. I'm going to try to flash and get out. However, I do end up dying, but I use up all my spells before I die and we do get a pick on the Silas. I should have flushed a tiny bit earlier, but in the end, it's somewhat okay. We're gonna just do a small fight in the middle of the river. However, my team should be a little bit more careful because our York is split pushing, so we should be backing out a little bit. But in the end, it's okay. My team plays this fight up pretty well, and we're gonna be able to secure a one for two. As my team is gonna head over to two dragon, my goal right now is to make sure that the enemy team doesn't come to stop us from doing dragon. Before I go get vision, I'm going to make some plants that are going to auto tactic dragon to help us clear it faster. Meanwhile, I'm going to start sweeping the area of vision because I know they most likely planted some vision when they caught me in the middle of the lane a minute ago. Since Baron is spawning soon, I now am going to start moving my vision up towards Baron. I drop a ward and then immediately I'm going to start recalling again. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to back so that I can have more wards ready in case they clear the wards I just placed. I think a lot of times, as a support, 
especially if you're trying to establish a vision around a contested spot like Baron, it's pretty easy to use up all your wards, especially if they get cleared out. Therefore, I always like to walk to an objective about a minute or so before I think a fight is going to start, plant wards in areas I want vision in, and then recall so that I have extra wards ready in case they get cleared. Luckily as I write, you can also keep making plants in spots you want to have vision. In this case, I keep making plants in that contested bush I keep mentioning about, which does a lot of free damage to Morgana and Katarina as they try to clear it. No other support can use this to their advantage, so make sure you really abuse this fact of Zyra, so that you don't face check into areas that you don't need to. With that scrying orb, I know that they're not in the area, so I can keep on moving forward and re-establishing vision. Once again, using my pink ward in the very contested spots like this bush, and then using plants in the areas that I don't have vision on. This is very staple stuff as Zyra, and it's one of the main reasons why you should never get caught as Zyra, because you have this huge advantage of getting vision from a very safe distance. One other ward I really like to place is in the middle of the lane. I really like this ward in particular because it allows you to spot rotations from mid lane if any person on an enemy team clears a mid wave and walks to a different lane. For example, if they walk top or if they walk bot or if they back off to do a camp like wolves or raptors, you can always see where they're walking to if you have a ward in the middle of the lane like this. This word is going to play a very important part in a little bit, so keep that in mind. There isn't much going on. Once again, hovering behind Jin to play bodyguard and make sure he can farm safely without fear of getting caught. I'm thinking about going back to recall. However, I spot the Caitlyn is pushing this wave pretty aggressively. I know most AD carries tend to shove waves really quickly, so I think that there is a chance she might stick around. So I'm going to choose to wait uh, out of vision and hope that she inches a little bit more forward. I know that she doesn't know I'm here because I have a pink ward in this bush, so I know this area is not warded. And since I have a lane ward over here, I know she's walking up forward without her thinking that she's anyone's in the area. Therefore, I'm gonna land a really max range E, which lands on the Caitlyn, and we're gonna get a lot of damage on her, as well as a Jin ult firing away. Jin gets a really nice snipe, and we are able to get a free pick on Caitlyn. There are a lot of things I kept in mind when going for that pick that I knew that increased our chances of getting a very successful kill. One was the ward that I placed in the middle of the lane. Two was the fact that there was a pink ward in this bush so I know they didn't have vision. And three, I knew that Caitlyn didn't have summoner spells because she burned her flash from before. So I knew it was a very high likelihood that we were gonna secure the kill on her. With that kill secured, we're pretty much free to push mid without any fear because their main source of damage is gone. I can once again keep making plants to keep zoning them out and staying really far back to make sure that they can't engage on us. They desperately try to engage on us and I'm going to use my ult to disengage the fight and reset it. You shouldn't be too conservative with your ult and look for damage. The knockup and zoning potential it provides is generally enough to help you secure the fight if you need to back off or if you want to counter engage. Since they backed off and they don't have any more engage tools, we're pretty much free to poke the turret 24-7. I'm always waiting on the side trying to harass with plants and once again making sure I don't get caught by any random stray CC. We choose to back off because the Caitlyn respawn, so we're gonna go ahead and clear some jungle camps and clear out any pink wards they have in their jungle. This is always a good thing to do especially for backing. Clearing the raptor camp or clearing the wolf camp they are always very safe options if you want to maximize your lead after you push very deep into the enemy base. The next thing we're going to look for is doing the Baron. We can do this pretty easily because we have a Zyra with plants and a Nivea with her ult who can continuously deal damage to Baron over time. So I'm going to first try to establish vision around the area with a Nivea. We have a pink in the Baron pit and we still have the pink that I left inside the bush here, which is going to be really good for spotting out any potential enemy champions from walking in. Now we choose to make the Baron call. Take a moment to think why we chose to do the Baron call right here. The main reason why we chose to do this is because we saw that the Sejuani revealed herself bot. Since we know the Sejuani is bot, the likelihood that they can steal away the Baron is dramatically decreased, so we're going to choose to do the Baron now because of that. With doing this Baron, it's pretty important to communicate with your jungler if he has might or not. In this case, 
We start the Baron, but we didn't actually realize the Ivern did not have Smite. And because of that, we're actually going to have the Baron get stolen with the Caitlyn auto, which is pretty unlucky. I think if we had communicated this better, Jin could have saved his 4th shot, it wouldn't have had that Baron stolen from us. Nevertheless, it's okay. We might have lost the Baron, but we can definitely still come back from this game. I'm just going to go ahead and recall, get some more wards, and start heading bot to help out the Yorick, because he just died. However, we do get a kill on the Silas, and we're just going to go mid lane to defend, since they do have Baron and they're going to start pressuring. We see that the Sejuani is doing Dragon, however, it's really unsafe for me to go help the Ivern right now, especially since I don't have Vision in this bush right here, since they have a pink here. Therefore, I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm going to get caught, so I'd rather just first place the pink in this bush to make sure that it's very safe to help out the Ivern if we need to, and then I can assess the situation. Now we can see the Katarina and Morgana are slowly walking down to help the Ivern. So now this is a much better judgment of when we can fight. And so we're going to try to get the pick on the Caitlyn, and she does flash away because of the Anivia wall. But note that Anivia can only confidently make that play because I made sure we established the vision first and knew where they were so that we can assess the situation and then fight as necessary. We did see them recall, so I'm going to plant some wards right now, and then I'm going to start recalling. I want to put one ward in the middle of the lane because I, since I know they're going to be pushing with Baron buff, having vision in the middle of the lane is quite nice. One ward over here and one ward over here should be sufficient if they choose to push mid or if they choose to rotate from mid to top. I think there's a pretty okay chance that they might rotate to top, so I wanted to put one ward there just in case. Plus it does give a little bit of vision in the lane, so you are able to see a lot more throughout this lane as they are sieging us, which is very important in general. Now that they're sieging, we're going to look to try to contest their siege. We see that York is pushing bot on our team, so we're going to tell him to keep applying pressure bot while the four of us tries to hold to the best of our abilities, which we can generally do because we have Anivia and Zyra. We're trying to look for a pick here, but I'm going to once again focus my attention on Katarina to make sure that the Jin can fight without being contested. Now that we see the Silas's bot and it's a 4v4, we're going to look for a pick here. We know that Caitlyn doesn't have flash, so we're going to try to aggress on Caitlyn. However, as a support, you should always be looking for opportunities to CC really important targets. In this case, even though Caitlyn is really far away and she is a very juicy target, I also see that Katarina is also in the side. And with the way that Divya and I are facing, it doesn't look like we are going to be targeting Katarina at all. Therefore, I'm going to switch targets immediately, hit the Katarina with my root, and I do land a root on her, and we're going to be able to follow up after Azania to secure a kill. With that pick, we're going to choose to keep pushing mid, even though they lost Baron buff, simply because they're very scattered right now. I aggress really far forward, and I make sure to place a ward over the wall right here to not only see the siege mid, but to also give vision if they choose to rotate bot to where the York just was. The Yorick TP's mid, and now we're just going to do one final push mid. He was able to kill the Silas bot, and now it's a 5v3. With the numbers advantage, and with the Yorick zombies, we are able to tank this turret reasonably well, and we're going to secure the win by taking the turrets pretty quickly, and uh, taking the Nexus. Even though they had the Baron buff, we were still able to find the picks as needed, and secure the win for our team. So the main takeaway point from this video is 1. Zyra is very, very good at establishing vision. I think there were many examples in this video where I was able to get vision very easily for my team using my plants, as well as using pink wards in efficient spots to make sure that we had the necessary information to make good judgments and calls when we're team fighting. The second really important thing is Zyra is to make sure you're always positioned to help provide CC and zoning for your team. There was no fight this game where I was ever frontlining or trying to engage on them outside of the Katarina pick. Instead, I was always hanging back behind the Jin so that if the Jin or the Anivia get CC'd, I'm there to help provide the necessary support so that they can get out. Overall, I think Zyra is a pretty good champ in this meta if you pick her into the right matchups. I think she has a lot of excellent poke in lane. As you saw, we were able to apply a lot of pressure with my plant poke and we were able to secure a lead by spreading our lead across the map and being able to safely siege lanes without them being able to engage on us. 
Thanks for watching this video and see you guys later.